Welcome to Parenting Decoded, a podcast for practical approaches to parenting. I'm Mary Eschen. Life isn't fair. It never has been. How we deal with life is what matters. Our children are given to us for a short time, and our job is to train them in the ways of the world. One of those lessons for all of us as parents will be that life isn't fair. If we try to make things fair or feel guilty when our kids yell at us, that isn't fair, and second guess ourselves with, was I being fair or was I unfair? We run the risk of trying to give our kids the misimpression that life is supposed to be fair. It's not. It never will be. It's how we react to the fair or unfair that shows our character and allows us to be human and unique. What would be better to impress on our children would be that fairness means everyone gets what they need, not that everyone gets the same things. There seem to be a few areas which trigger the it's not fair alarm on a regular basis in our kids. The first is between siblings. One gets invited to a birthday party and the other doesn't. And then the first one comes home with a goodie bag. It has toys and goodies and candies and cookie that the older sibling wants. And he's mad and he yells, it's not fair. Or how about an older sibling gets to stay out late while the younger sibling has to stay at home with mom and dad. It's not fair. Or how about a younger sibling that gets to do something that an older sibling was forbidden to do at the same age? One friend of mine remembers she wasn't allowed to shave her legs until she was in ninth grade, but her younger sister was allowed to in seventh. That's not fair. I remember my little sister got to pierce her ears at age 14. When my sisters and I had to wait until we were 16, that was so unfair. Another category is between classmates or school, people outside the home. Someone makes a team when you don't. Someone wins a prize, gets the good teacher, or is more popular. Another category is between kids and parents. One of my friends was telling me how her son was yelling, it's not fair, when she bought herself a kombucha. There's also times where parents might have cell phones or computers and not the kids, or maybe parents have access to Wi-Fi all the time, but the kids' accounts are shut off at 8 p.m. Seems not fair. How about between kids and the world? Some kids are targeted by race, religion, or physical ailment. Some kids don't have enough money to live. There's pollution and poverty and injustice and climate problems. Most of that is just not fair at all. Well, what can you do as a parent? First of all, allow for emotions and disappointment. We want to practice empathy with them. Wow, it's hard not to get invited to a party when your brother does. That makes you so sad. I'm sorry. Or, gee, your best friend made the All-Stars baseball team and you didn't. That's so sad. I'm sorry. There's no need to sugarcoat it. Just let it be there. Let them know that they are still loved despite a disappointment. My kombucha mom just needs to say, yeah, it's hard when mom gets something that you don't. So sorry about that. Some of us will need to go brain dead so that we don't get sucked into an argument after giving empathy. You just stay silent and say short phrases like, I know. Or, nice try. Another thing you need to do is to help them have empathy for others who aren't as fortunate. This is hard to teach at times. I know it probably took me until I was in college that I was able to realize that I could cheer on my siblings instead of being disappointed that I didn't get to do something. We need to help them cheer on for each other, not just compete. Love them no matter what. Teach them that they are unique, and although life isn't always fair, they are loved in amazing and unique ways. I also want to encourage you to avoid labeling and comparing your kids to each other, even with positive labels, as they can create a level of unfairness that you can't even detect. When parents say, why can't you behave like your brother? Or, why are you so messy all the time? Why can't you be neat like your sister? Or any of the thousands of comparisons we can make about our unique children. 
Your kids might be messy or have trouble staying at the table, but that's on them, not on their siblings. Gina Horn, in her blog called Mom's Lifeboat, has some great ideas about what to tell your kids when they are in the it's not fair funk. A lot of this list is like what we do on the parents list that I just went over. First, let them know it's okay to express their emotions. God gave us these emotions and we shouldn't be ashamed to express them. You can be angry, but you cannot take your anger out on others. You can cry, but you can't dwell in self-pity. Be happy, but do not be boastful. Next, encourage them to always give praise whether they are on the upside or the downside. I made it to the all-stars, but my brother didn't. I thought for sure he would have made it. He was awesome at tryouts, or maybe on the downside. Congrats, bro. I'm bummed I didn't make it, but I'm glad one of us did. Next, help them to continue on with life. Embrace the now, enjoy the adventure, and or create new ones. Have them lead by example. People will remember how you act when disappointments or victories happen. Do it with grace and humility. Lastly, support them in learning from this opportunity. Don't look at this as an opportunity as if you failed. The only failure you have is that you give up. I was recently working with a family of four that has one of the kids that's the it's not fair guy. It almost didn't matter what was happening. If he didn't like it, his response was, it's not fair. We decided for that child, he was using the phrase to get a rise out of mom and dad because he was just so frustrated so often. It was time to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him to talk about other things he might be able to do when he was frustrated. They needed to take time to listen to him and come up with a plan for how to communicate more effectively if he was frustrated since it's not fair wasn't getting him where he liked to be. They needed to make a problem-solving experience instead of the aggravating experience that he was creating by always shouting, it's not fair. For those of you who have two or more kids, I'd love to suggest an experiment that's based on a second grade teacher's innovative lesson on fairness. Shauna Perea from the blog Caffeinated and Creative created this lesson that I'll call the Band-Aid Experiment. First, make up a bunch of note cards with medical ailments, each on a separate card. Paper cut, skinned knee, broken leg, appendix burst, a fever, a car accident with a head injury, a bee sting, whatever else you'd like. Give everyone in your family an ailment card, or maybe two or three, depending on your family size. Have each person describe their ailments and discuss the degree of severity of each. Then hand out band-aids to each person, just the small one-inch kind. Go around the table and ask if the band-aid will fix their ailment. Make special note of the ones that will not be fixed by the band-aid. As you finish the round, Ask if it's fair that everyone got a Band-Aid. Is that what they'd want? Ask them each what they'd want if the Band-Aid didn't help them. Was it more or less than they needed? The point is to teach that just because everyone got a Band-Aid and it seemed fair, it didn't help everyone. What would actually be fair is if the ailments were cured. Each person is unique, just like ailments. We need different things but want to end up at the same place feeling loved and supported for the unique people we are. You can also modify this to give everyone but one child a Band-Aid and discuss how they felt not receiving one. The human experience isn't about fairness. It's about uniqueness. It isn't about making things equal all the time. It's about making them beautiful despite the fact that they aren't equal. It isn't about comparing what we have to what someone else has, but instead about finding a way to be happy with what life has given each of us, our own unique experience to grow from. So next time your child stomps their feet at you to declare, it's not fair, sit them down and say, you're right, it's not fair. But that doesn't mean I don't love you. It just means that you're going to learn different things than other kids at different times. Adele Gabrielson wrote so eloquently about teaching 
fairness to kids on her blog, An Illuminated Life. It's one of those philosophical parenting quotes that I want to memorize. Here's how it goes. This is not a lesson I want you to learn after you've left the shelter of my home and heart out in the big world all alone. The world will hurt you, and if you expect it to be fair, you will suffer more. Don't expect fairness. Do not seek it. Instead, seek grace. Be grateful when you're on the upside. Be patient when you're on the down. Be compassionate and generous when you see others who deserve more but have less. I hope you've gained some perspective on how to get a handle around the it's not fair issues with your kids. Personally, I think empathy and patience are probably the biggest helpers, along with reminding ourselves that our job as parents isn't to make life fair all the time. If you need help and encouragement, feel free to contact me. My mission, as most of you know, is to help parents feel supported and encouraged. Send email to mary at parentingdecoded.com or join my Facebook group, Parenting Decoded 2021, and let me know how I can help you and your family. There is a transcript available of this podcast in the podcast notes, and I'm available for one-on-one coaching. Lastly, I'd love to have any of you take a minute to rate the podcast and review it. It would really be encouraging to me to know that I've been helpful. Take care and be safe. Have a blessed rest of your day.